This one is a little bit different from the question before because now they're asking about capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. Wow, got difference eh? They want specifically parallel plate. So parallel plate capacitors, well, they kind of look like this. You have one metal plate, then you have another metal plate here. Then the wire go out. The side view is like this lah, which is why the symbol of capacitor is, you know, parallel plate like what you all do in electric fields, you know, got two metal plates. So you need to tweak your answer a little bit already because now you see it's going to be three marks. So you know that Q equals to CV, right? And you can rearrange that capacitance is Q over V. So you can say it's the ratio of charge over, uh, charge stored over potential difference. But you must say charge stored where? Must be specific. So you say charge stored on one plate of the capacitor. Ah, so it must be more, more specific. Eh? One plate of the capacitor to ratio of what? Q against V. So you say to the potential difference. I'm going to shortcut and just say PD across the plates. So it's kind of, yeah, it's a really a throwback to electric fuse. You're going to have a potential difference delta V across that side. So yeah, that's how you can think of it. So there's three marks here. One actually comes from you knowing this ratio of Q over V. So I just put here like ratio of charge over V, charge to PD. This one I'll put a M1. Now the other details is charge where? Charge stored on one plate. Oh, you must be specific for parallel plate capacitor. And to potential difference where? Across the plate. So across the plates here is another A1 mark. Wow, three marks there, right? Like this. So if you see this is a bonus, uh, but you must know that you're talking about capacitance specifically for parallel plates. Whoa, this one. Okay. Now, if you have not tried this example, pause the video now. Go try it first, then only come and look at it. Because this one, you'll find that you kind of have to read the question really carefully and to know what's going on. Okay, so hopefully you got to do that already. To at least try it out. Here you have a circuit. Very similar to the one we looked at before. You have some battery power, supply, capacitor, and the emitter. When the switch is at X, so let's say we connect this way. The battery is connected to the capacitor. So what happens? Charging. The capacitor is charged this way. So what's going to happen, for example, is, you know, current flow this way or charges flow in the opposite direction. But never mind, charges flow this way. By induction, all the charges are going to gather here. Positive, 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 positive. Negative, 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 negative. So all the positive there will repel all the positive. So all the positive move the other side. In real life, it's electrons moving. Lah, but never mind, for current sake, we'll just say this. So this is the charging loop on the left side. What happens if you disconnect that? Oh, there's no current now. So now the capacitor is just storing the energy there. All the charges are on the plates. But when you connect to the other switch, what happens is now you have the discharging loop. So here is discharge. What's going to happen to the charges? They're like, wow, we stuck here very long. Like we want to be free. So all this negative will just go back here. All the positive will move around. So you will lose all the charges at the plates and discharge a lot. So in the process, oh, there will be a current flowing through this emitter and you can measure a certain current. So that's how you know it's discharging. Uh. Okay. So remember the left side, charge, right side, discharge. Okay. Depending on how you flip the switch. Let's see what we're supposed to do here. Uh, the switch vibrates. Wow. So weird. The switch vibrates. So there is X, there is Y. Then back to X. Wow. 50 times each, each second. Wow. So it'd be like X, Y, X, Y, X, Y, X, Y, X, Y. So what the capacitor will do is, very cute one, it will charge, discharge, charge, discharge, charge, discharge, charge, so 50 times per second. Whew. And the current recorded is 4.5 micro, sorry, mu m. Here. Micro amps. Okay. Determine the charge passing through the emitter in one second. So, one second, oh, how many times has it charged and discharged? Ah? 50 times each second. So, this is after 50 times later. 
So remember, our charges only will pass through here. Charge passes through the emitter when your capacitor is discharging. So every time you discharge, a bunch of coulombs will go through this emitter. Discharge again, a bunch of charges go through. Discharge again, go through. So over one second or 4.5. How to find Q? Uh? Mm, remember Q equals to IT. This one you gotta remember from AS because one of the main ideas of what current is, rate of flow of Q. Okay, so we wanna find Q. We know that in one second you have uh, 4.5 mu, mu is 10 to the negative 6, and in one second. Eh, why well, I draw so many lines? So this is just 4.5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, total amount of charge that has passed through. Now, a very important tip is, this is the amount of charge that goes through in uh, after 50, 50 times, because 1 seconds ma. So this is 50 times. 50 discharges later. This is the total amount that goes through. This is important because later they will poke you about it. So this is just one mark A1 here. Okay, lo. Now we come to the next part. Calculate the charge on one plate of the capacitor each time that it is charged. Now this each time, underline it each time that it is charged. Just now we found a Q. That's actually Q total. Uh, after one second, which is 50 times. So if Q total is 10 to negative 6 coulomb, each time of that will be Q, stored on each plate, that will be 4.5 times 10 to negative 6 divided by 50. Because you already discharge 50 times and the total add up to be this. Ma. So this one will give you 9.0 times 10 to the negative 8 coulomb. So you're right here. 9.10 times 10 to the negative 8. Now you know, in one mark also, so A1. Okay, I'm going to pause here and go back to this picture again. So with that information, oh, you can think of it this way. Once you charge, there's all this Q stored here. And this Q is uh, 9 times 10, negative 8 on one plate. The moment you discharge, that 9.5 times 10 to the negative 8 will go and pass by this one. This amount of charge will pass by. Imagine like all the dots. Dots pass by. This many dots pass by the emitter. So emitter sees that. But it's only for one discharge. Now do this 50 times. It's time you add another 9.9 .9 times 10 to the negative 8. Discharge again. Add another one. 10 to the negative 8. Discharge another time. So you keep doing 50 times. The total will be... This one, 4.5 times 10, negative 6. Rewind a bit if the, your brain is like hanging like, huh, how to bring this? Go and look at it and think through it very carefully again. Okay, anyway, let's move on. Capacitance, Q equals to CV. So here you know, hmm, you know Q. Ah. Which Q to use? Ah? You want capacitance, right, of the capacitor. So you know each time how much charge can be staying on the plate. So you're going to use this Q down here. So 9.0 times 10 to the negative 8. How much charge can be sitting on the metal plate? That will be C times... What's the V? Ah? Go give to us. Ah. The V. Hmm. Check your circuit. V. Ah, God. Nah. This is in series with this uh, capacitor. So there will also be 120 volts. You rise by 120, you must drop by 120. Kirchhoff's first law. So we know, oh, 120, okay, okay. We know info. So when you divide everything out here, you should get a C of about 7.5 times 10 to the negative 10. Final answer to SF Kennedy, la. you want to go 3 also can. So we go 7.5 times 10, negative 10. This is two marks, so one is for A1, one is going to be for a substitution. Because I think they really give you CV, eh? Sometimes they will give you QCV, but usually they want to see you plug in the correct value. So you plug in, get substitution mark. Next, the final part. Oh, this one you have to brain a bit. The second capacitor, having a capacitance is equal to the one in C. Now placed in series with C. Suggest and explain. Wow, I've got two things. 
suggest and explain what the effect what's the effect and why so this is the what and the why what's the effect why why is that effecting the effect on the current recorder on the emitter well how to draw imagine this you have now the same circuit but now you are connected to uh, two capacitors one here one here so these two caps are the same value they have the same capacitance but how does that affect the current which is going to be on this side measured by the emitter hmm now this one is a sneak peek preview of what we will be looking in the next unit ex uh, right after this video so get excited how do you deal with capacitors in series and parallel? Oh, here's a tip. When you have capacitors in series, you don't get to store as much charge on your plates. Why? Uh? Well, because, you see, uh, all these charges start moving thanks to the battery. Okay, anyways, let's connect the thing first. Uh, let's connect, connect. Uh, let's connect. Uh, okay, connect the circuit. So now we are charging. We are in the charging loop. All the charges will move, let's say, here. All the negative is there. Lor. The negative will repel all the negative on the other plate. So all the positive gather here. Then where do the, the negative charges all go? All the negative charges will go here. They cannot cross the they cannot cross over the capacitor. Ah. So repel and all the charges get pushed there. So it's quite limited. Lah. Like you can't do much here. It's just I push you, you push me, you push the next fella down the road. So that's what's happening here. Negative, push, positive. They push the capacitor, push, 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 push all the way. So actually you don't store as much charge here. It's actually storing less at each plate. So that means when you connect to the discharging loop, pew, what's going to happen is all these fellas will move and these fellas um, will move and you will discharge, and that's it. What happened to the fellas in the middle? Lah? These fellas will just move down. Lor. They cannot cross over capacitor. Ma. They are stuck. Okay. So strictly speaking, the negative charges are moving. So let me draw negative charge. Ah, so, nah, nah. so negative charge is moving. Orange one will go back here. The green color one, they are pretty much stuck in between. So they... Inductance, they are stuck inside there. Okay, so they cannot come out. They just move around there. So what happens is... Your emitter here will measure half the current of what it originally was. And that is partially because now your effective capacitance has decreased. So half the current means half capacitance because connected in series. I give you a preview of how to calculate this. So the new capacitance combined together in series will be jing 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 are you ready for this one over c1 plus one over c2 negative one does this look familiar to you one over c plus one over c hmm looks familiar you will find out more in the next video how is this why is this where this equation come from but for now we'll just take with a pinch of salt we're like okay okay so you can say the total capacitance is half so capacitance is the how much you can store a certain potential. So total capacitance is halved. And you can say kind of like less total charge. Less total 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 charge. Wow, I cannot spell. What happened to my spelling? Less total charge passing the emitter. So there's less amount of total charge passing the emitter, then you can say that is current will be halved. Don't just say decrease. Uh. If you can say half, you calculate and you say half. Law. Okay. So if I do whew, this calculation, 1 over 7.5 times 10, negative 10. 1 over 7.5 times 10, negative 10. I will get half, which is 3.75 times 10, negative 10. So these two are capacitor together. They essentially kind of have storing less charge. It's like saying, oh, originally you have a very big plate. Wait, sorry. Uh. Here, very big plate. Now you have a small plate. So less amount of charge can sit there. It's like the equivalent of that. Lah. This one, wow, many, 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 many can be there. 
Okay, it's kind of why the nature of it because you have these sections where these charges cannot come out. All these at the edge only move around. Everything in between, they are just moving between the capacitors. Okay, so this one is two marks. Where is it? Capacitance half, current half. So capacitance half will be your first mark. Here, B1, half, B1. Wow, it's on red. If you feel like you're not convinced, you can try to play around with some equation. So capacitance is calculated by C equals to Q over V. Right? So if your capacitance is half already, or then your amount of charge passing will be kind of like half. And current also, our current is what? In here, you're kind of measuring the average current about one over one second. So this one also half already, like your current lesser, lesser, a lesser charge pass through in one second, lesser current. So that's what I'm trying to talk about over here. But the first one, we will think of it this way. Lah. The second one, you can think of that. Okay, so that's all for this question. This whole part where you can, an uh, intro to capacitor in series. You, know, you need to be able to use the equation to calculate later in the next section. But for now, this is the intro to capacitance and charging and discharging. So make sure you know how to think about all these systems working together. That's all for this video. I will see you in the next unit about capacitors in, in circuits series and parallel.